Hi guys, welcome to Remote Art Club. Let's make some bubbles. Something to keep in mind is tone when you're making your artwork. Tone is essentially light or dark and it can be in an object or it can be a colour. So for example, the image on the left, we've got examples of tone that's used to show how light or dark a colour is. And on the right, we've got an example of tone of a shape and you can see where the light is coming from. So it's a very light tone or a light shade on the left and a dark tone on the bottom right. It also gives the illusion of form and I want you to have a go at trying to make your bubble look 3D as well. Let's have a quick look at this artwork because it's a great example of light, medium and dark tone, which is what you'll be blending to make your bubble look 3D. So having a look, it's pretty easy to spot the light tones. So they're generally the white ones. And if I just do a little scribble here, you can see there's a lot of light tone around the sun, which makes sense because that's the source of light. Yeah. The medium tones are more around this area with the blue. I hope you can see my little sketchy on top. And you can see around here, we've got the white and the blue mixing together to make it look blended. And down the bottom, we've got the dark tone down here. Okay, so keep that in mind when you choose your colours for your bubbles. Okay, here are some photographs of some bubbles. Let's have a close look to see the kind of things that we should probably include in our illustration today. You can see that there is a mix of colours inside them. You don't have to use pink, purple, blue, yellow, orange, but it might be nice to include a few different colours when you're blending. Notice they're also translucent. So the paper that you draw them on some of that paper colour should come through. They're not a solid uh, circle or a ball, yeah? You want to be able to see some of that page colour come through. They have um, a bright reflection or a sparkle on them. So this is where you'll use a, a white colour to achieve a little highlight. And the last thing, these are, when you actually are colouring in and applying your material, Notice that the colours are curved in the shape of the bubble itself. This is what we call contour lines, okay? So contour lines mean the colours inside flow with the shape of the object. And this is actually a really good tip when making your artwork look 3D in anything you draw. So today you'll be using chalk pastels. If you don't have chalk pastels, you can just use chalk that you can get from the supermarket or the $2 shop. And chalk pastels are super duper soft, beautiful to work with because they're really easy to blend. And here's some lovely examples of the kind of things that you can do with chalk. All right, let's get our toolbox ready. I reckon practice on some white paper at first. I'd love you to do a final piece on black paper. If you can't get black paper, don't worry about it. Stick with the white. If you don't have chalk pastels, I've already mentioned you can use chalk. You will definitely need a white chalk in your set and an eraser would be handy too for cleaning up at the end. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is just have a little play and practice with your materials. You can see that I'm using actual chalk pastels, but like I said, chalk is fine, okay? For my first practice, I'm just putting a couple of colours next to each other. This might be a nice way of you seeing which colours work well together. At this stage, I'm not blending. Notice I've chosen colours that are quite similar to each other. This is what I call harmonious colours, okay? And because they're very close to each other on the colour wheel, because they're very similar, they blend really beautifully together, okay? So it's really easy to make them blend. You can see that I'm using my finger here to blend the pastels, and you can see instantly it turns to dust and it's super, super duper smooth, okay? Notice that I also, when I'm blending, I bring some of that colour over, blend it down and across to the previous colour so it looks like it's all blended. 
Now I was working inside, so tapping off excess dust I put in a container. If you're working outside, you can just blow this away. You might want to try uh, drawing or making different types of marks. You might even want to try blending some colours on top of each other. Notice I've changed to warm colours, not cool. Notice with this particular exploration, I've chosen a light, a medium and a dark tone, yeah, or a light, a medium and a dark colour. And because they're next to each other, they create different tones. So the pink is that medium tone. So if it gets a little lost, once you've started blending on top, you can draw over it again. So you can keep layering and keep blending. This is actually mixing colours together rather than just blending them left to right, light to dark, okay? So in your exploration, have a go at finding colours that are different tones and have a go at mixing them together with your fingers. Your last little practice will be to draw a circle or a sphere, kind of like practicing doing your bubble. But instead of leaving a little bit transparent or leaving a bit blank, I want you to shade this whole thing in and practice blending light, medium and dark tones. You can see here I'm adding yellow. This is going to be my lightest tone. Notice the way I'm blending it. Oh. I think here I'm showing you the different tones. So that so the yellow is my light, the orange is my medium, and that orangey red is going to be my dark tone. Yeah. So we'll go to the medium now. Notice the way I apply the pastel in contour lines or curved lines that follow the shape of the outside of the circle. Noticing the way the motion that I'm doing is a curved motion. And I'm going to add a little bit more yellow and blend that across into the orange. So it looks a little bit more consistently blended that side, yeah. dark tone now. I'm going to add a little bit of orange. So often you need to bring the lighter tone back on top of the darker tone because the light tone can get a little lost because dark tones are very deep. There you go, a little little practice page. That's what we're looking for. We've got the white at the very end, and that might be a nice thing to add for a little highlight, okay? So I played around with um, blending it in. You might want to just create a really bright highlight. Um, I quite like the idea of making two particular points that are super bright, so I've kind of added that in as well. And again, there's nothing wrong with going over it, bringing in a colour, layering and layering. And that's the beauty of pastels, you can keep going. Now for the next step, drawing your actual
actual bubble. You might want to come back to this slide. You might want to pause it so you've got some examples of bubbles in front of you. Alrighty, this is where you draw an actual bubble and you can see I've got a whole range of blues, different tones. And what I tend to do whenever I use any material, and you know that I get you guys to practice this if I ever have you in class, is just testing the colours, whether it be paint or in this case pastels, actually see what the colours look like so you can do a little trial. Helps you choose your colours. All right, when you go to start drawing your circle, it makes sense to use a really light tone at first because it's a little bit more forgiving if you make any mistakes. Also, you want your you tend to work from the lightest tone when you're blending it with something like pastels. So always work from light to dark generally. If you don't get your circle quite right at first, it doesn't matter because remember you're going to be actually smoothing around with your finger and you've also got the opportunity to use an eraser at the end to neaten up the edges. <laughs> now you can see my finger wasn't quite clean from doing the warm colours from the earlier piece of paper. So I would recommend washing your fingers in between especially if you're going from say a yellow color to a blue in the end i just ended up adding some more blue on top to kind of mix that over so it was fine so i'm bringing the light blue further into the circle or the bubble to make sure that i've got more colour to blend in the darker tones with okay so without having enough light blue there I'm not going to have any colour to blend my darker tones with. Notice I've left the middle see-through or the snow colour and that's to give that illusion that it's transparent. We're using a medium tone here so I'm not going for the full-blown dark just yet so I've chosen my medium blue and I'm applying it with the point of the chalk. So I'm trying to get like a thin line at first. I don't want a big thick line around my edges. You can always add more, yeah? Less is more with any art material. You can always add more, but it's harder to take away. And you can see that's blended in fairly nicely. I'm going to use the very tip now of the dark. I don't want to introduce a lot of dark. I want it to be just like a crisp little edge. So I'm trying to be fairly light in my application. I'm not pressing hard, but I'm trying to get on the very edge there to get a nice dark tone right on the edge. carefully blending now trying to keep obviously inside the bubble shape because you don't want too much going outside you want that blue the dark blue blending in with the medium and from here it's really just a matter of adding a little more as you need I thought the centre needed a little bit more blue. I thought it was a little bit too transparent in the middle there. So I just kind of blended a bit more in. And a little bit more on the side there. Just so it doesn't jump too quickly. With the tones, you want it to be really smooth and blended.
Now the last step is to add a little bit of a highlight using a white. Now I did my white up the top because I've got more dark blue down the bottom right there. Keep in mind when you're doing your shines, you want your shines to also be curved to match the outline of the bubble. Again, this makes it look 3D. Cool. Now you've got your little practice done. Now the last thing you might want to do is just use an eraser to clean up the edges. The other thing you can do to avoid smudging, um, particularly if you lean on your page a lot, you can get um, an extra piece of paper and use that um, to cover where your hand is leaning to avoid smudging. But using an eraser after works just as well. Try not to um, go too much onto your pastel itself because what will happen is you'll end up um, blending and smudging the pastel with your eraser. So you'll actually end up um, smudging more rather than removing pastel. And be careful when you're brushing the eraser marks off because you don't want to actually brush your work. Yeah, lovely. So my intention is for now you to do like a good copy if you like. So on black paper, these bubbles would look amazing. Have a look. Here's some examples of some student work where they have drawn bubbles. You can see the one on the left. We've got either the one side of the bubble is like an orangey colour, the other one's a, a yellowy colour with a really bold highlight and you've got other ones there with reds and uh, sorry greens and blues the one on the right is actually more kind of similar to how I taught you from light to dark um, shading yeah again with really strong highlights these ones are a little different again lovely examples of using the rainbow colors on the left where you're blending yellows and reds and oranges and blues and greens together and leaving a little center for some transparency. I think the ones on the left would be more successful if they were a little bit more um, blended towards the middle. So I would actually use my finger and actually make the very center of that bubble a little bit more transparent by making the colors less bold and blending them in the middle there. The one on the right here has a really nice example of showing um, the contour and following the curve of the bubble, still leaving a little bit of transparency. But the other thing I really like about this one is the outline of the bubble, almost showing uh, the outside is um, shining like a highlight. These are another couple of good examples of showing contour particularly the one on the left where the, the strokes of the chalk or the pastel follow the outside and with great highlights. The one on the right, I think the highlights are quite successful. It really shows the shape of the highlights, but I think the contour or the curve lines could have wrapped around more. So these bubbles don't look as 3D as they could, but the overlapping is something that makes gives the illusion that they're 3D. So keep overlapping in mind. Now these two I'm showing you are not student examples. These are, you know, teacher artist examples. So they're super high level, but I think they're a really lovely example of the one on the left showing you the highlights, almost making it like a little star shape and noticing that some of the edges, the colors hardly present. So it looks like it's really see-through. It gives the illusion that the bubbles really are transparent. The one on the right, the outside line is all the way around, but notice the color doesn't quite touch the edges. So again, giving the illusion that it is transparent. Lovely. Remember to take photos of your artwork, put them on Shobi, make sure they're clear, yeah? And any practice ones, any layered bubbles, I'd love to see. And yeah, have fun.